Hi, my name is Bob Hughes with JD Squared, and what I'd like to show you here is the Model 53 Bender. It is a hydraulically powered machine, uses an AC pump only, weighs a little over 400 pounds, around 420 pounds. Um, let's start here at the very front of the machine right here. Start off with the spindle. Take the die off. All of our dies are machined from steel billet, guaranteed for life. This happens to be a two inch die. And this is the spindle right here. And this is actually what's in the spindle. This is the drive hub. And what we do is we machine it from four and a half inch alloy steel. And then we have drive teeth on it right here. And what we've done is we've managed to eliminate keyways. So we have a tapered spindle that will screw in here. And you can see the top of it here. That maintains the vertical alignment of the spindle. But all of the power is from directly from the teeth right to the dowel pins, right to the die. This allows us to build a very powerful machine without the possibility of shearing keyways. This particular machine here will generate 170,000 plus inch pounds of torque. That's a very a large amount of power. This is the bearing that we use for the spindle, the upper bearing. There's a two inch lower bearing and this large bearing right here. It is a greaseless design. It's designed for the life of the machine. Very oversized as you can tell and that once again is for durability. If we go back here to the pressure die system, this is kind of a unique design. What we wanted was a quick action, so you put your tubing in, just flip the flipper and away you go. But at the same time, we knew there was a lot of other applications that we could handle with this system. And so what we did was we designed it to where the whole entire system is removable very quickly. You can rotate it, take it out of the machine. And the reason for that is, is we're gonna come out with pressure screws here very shortly, for instance, that have rollers on them instead of the conventional pressure dies that we use. Now rollers tend to produce terrible bends. They're not, they're not very good at a quality of a bend. But where they are very good at is if you were bending rusty, just crappy tubing or pipe, rollers will roll along the pipe and not destroy themselves and they work pretty darn good for that. Also, other pressure die systems, for instance, if you want to bend top rails, if you're in the angle iron business or you're in the gate business, we'll be coming out with pressure dies that are specifically made for that. Um, channel, um, angle iron, things like that. If you notice here in the pressure screw, we have two holes. And what that is, is when she's installed this way, if you're going to do heavy, big, large stuff, let's say two and a half inch tubing, two inch, quarter inch wall DOM or something like that, we will design the follow bar to use the right hole because it will reduce the load on the machine. Now, if you're building, let's say, a top field dragster, and you're bending maybe inch and a half 058 chromoly thin wall tubing, we need to increase the pressure on the rear insert so what we'll do is we'll make the follow bar to handle to work in the left side hole. This way you get the best of both worlds and you can optimize design of the die set for the actual intended application. Another thing, if you notice here, we have two nuts right here. What this allows us to do is adjust anywhere we want where the pressure die is going to sit under a bending load. And what this allows us is to work on things like what well, I currently in development would be a mandrel extractor, tube feeder, things like that, that will require the tubing to be coming in straight from the side of the machine. This way you can infinitely adjust it. The other thing is too, you also can make custom dies very easily. So you could call up with some weird size, you know, 6.17 inch radius. And with this kind of system here, it's very easily um, made, which means it's also very affordable. Looking at the hydraulics right here, we're running a 3 inch, 3,000 PSI double acting cylinder running on a Teflon base right here so she doesn't um, wear herself out on the bottom. It's powered by a one and a half horsepower AC pump generating 3,000 PSI. It's a single stroke, in a single stroke she will stroke about 120 degrees. What that means is you can bend a 90 degree bend without having to reset the machine, you go right to it. Um, if you're going to do 180s, however, what you would do is you would stroke out your 90. We have a locking mechanism on this side of the machine that will lock the spindle every 45 degrees. So you'll stroke out your 90 degrees. When you hear it lock, you'll retract the spindle. Now the tubing has not retracted or sprung back because the lock has got it. That is very, very important because if you're bending very heavy stuff, it'll have a large amount of spring back. And if you're, if you're bending very thin wall tubing, 058, 049 in that area, you definitely don't want the thing to spring back because it'll start wrinkling. So what happens is you bend your 90, she locks, you just retract the cylinder, go on to your 180. This way we get the power and the convenience of a 90 degree one shot bender, but we do have the capability of easily bending 180 degree bends. 
All right, what we're gonna do now is let's go ahead and we're gonna put the die back in it and we're just gonna get right to bending. The spindle incorporates four one-inch dowel pins, which is a, a tremendous overkill, but a JD squared, we don't really like to make our money selling you warranty parts or selling you replacement parts. We just didn't do it right the first time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the flip here and we're gonna install the pressure die. All of our pressure dies are computer designed. The angles of the inserts are matched to the radius and the tubing that you're bending to within a thousands of a degree. This one here, we're gonna pop in right here. And what we're gonna go ahead and bend, let me grab it, is pretty heavy stuff. We're just gonna go ahead and put our money where our mouth is. This is two inch DOM, quarter inch wall. Very, very heavy stuff. In 30 years of being in business, this is the hardest material JD Squared's ever been asked to bend on a regular basis, and it's used by the guys who are building rock crawlers. This is what we're going to bend this time right here. Let's put it in there, put it in through the use strap. We're going to run our pressure die forward, and we're going to adjust it. And right now, just by eyeball sight, I can cheese about, cheese that, you know, coming out square of the bender. That's it. We, we're done putting it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the pump. We have a computer back here in the rear of the machine. All Model 50 Series benders come with this computer. It's going to give us a digital readout of one-tenth of a degree of where the die is during a rotation. It has a zero and set button, so once we preload the tubing, we will hit the zero. That'll zero it. And then we also have a set button that we can preset the bend to like 93 degrees, which just happens to be. You can store permanently 100 programs in it which means we can turn it off, we can take the power off. When you come back next time, turn the machine on, your programs are still there. So if you have very common um, bins that you make all the time, just store the program there and then select that bin and go at it. Now, the machines come with a hand pendant. And what we're gonna do here is one button obviously extends the RAM and one retracts it. The computer, if you have the optional auto stop, and it, it's a very affordable option, I think it's like $150. And what it will do is it basically takes over the control for you so that at when you're just before the bend where you're going, it's gonna it's just gonna let go of the button, it's gonna tap it in, and you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. Or you can just do it manually. It's fairly simple to do it manually too. So whether you would like to get that option, it, it'll be strictly up to you. There'll be a separate video describing that. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start the hydraulics, and then I'm gonna run it out. You will hear a clanking noise every 45 degrees, and that will be the spindle lock mechanism engaging. So I just engaged it right now. And, what, oh, almost forgot the magic formula here, Pam cooking oil. Just spray some on your tubing. Believe it or not, it works pretty darn good. Better than most oils I've ever worked with. All right, we're going to turn the pump on. At this point, we're going to zero out the, the bender. So all we're doing is we're taking the load, basically removing the play out of the dock. I will now press the button, and my display shows zero. You can't see that in the video, but other videos will show it closer. And at this point, we're ready to go. Now I'm just going to hold the button down. All right, you hear the clank? That's the first, that's the anti-spring lock locking in. You're going to hear it in a couple more seconds. There she goes again. We're at 70 degrees, 75, 80, 85, and she stopped. If you notice, I never let up the button. She's dead nuts on 93.0 degrees. Typical accuracy will be a couple tenths in that ballpark. Now what we're going to do is we want to continue bending 180 just to demonstrate that for you. What we would do is, is track the cylinder here. I'll tell you what, let's run our, let's change our bin. Go ahead and set a new bin. So we're going to select it. We're going to select bin one. All righty. And we're going to run her out a little further. Okay, now let's run her back. Okay, now all we need simply need to do is just continue on to our 180 degrees. You heard the clank right there, the spindle lock engaged. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disengage it because we don't need it anymore. Now this time, I'm just going to use the hand controller. I'm not going to let the computer do it. And we're pretty darn close right there. Um, that's pretty good. 
Um, we're showing 181.5 degrees. I don't want to overbend it, we'll get stuck on the dock. What we're going to do now, unload the tubing, bump it out of here. Now all i got to do is flip it right here, remove the U-strap, and we take the tubing out of the bender. And you can see it's very heavy tubing. In fact, it's actually warm to the touch for the amount of power that it takes to bend. Let's kill this off. All right. And then final thought, or final um, things here, the machine what you're looking at is actually three different steels. You have the base bender, which you could buy separately, then it's on the optional stand, and then it has, of course, the optional pump. We have different pumps available. This one right here is the most common by far. And like I say, you're looking at about 400 and something pounds. The stand has 1,200 pound rollers, and you simply insert the handles, and you can roll the machine down, and it has four-sided, four-cornered adjustable legs, because if you're in any kind of serious production and you want very accurate bends, you do want to bolt the machine down. You don't want to let it just sit on the rollers. Um, essentially, that is the Model 53 bender. We have other videos that we'll be describing the computer in more detail, showing close-ups of the spindle, stuff like that. If you've got the time, please check them out, and thank you for considering JD Squared. Goodbye.